Hi, this is Amanda with Wee Whimsy Photography, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over how to edit image number one. Uh, this is going to be our final edit, and the start of the, the image is um, right here. This is the image shot uh, straight out of camera in raw format, and we're going for a really dreamy matte enhancement uh, for our outdoor newborn edit here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the first thing that I will do when editing a uh, an, an image is start off with the skin, um, fixing any skin tones that need to be fixed, um, brightening, things like that. However, if there is something that needs to be fixed in the background, like we can see here, I will start off with that first. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start off by removing the client's uh, hand that you can see here and her knee uh, and the sunspots over here on the left hand side of the image. To do that, we're going to duplicate the background layer. I never work off of my original background layer just because if you do make a mistake and you want to go back and correct it, sometimes it can be hard to do that or impossible if you had flattened your image uh, and you wanted to get back to a certain point in your edit. So we're going to duplicate the background layer. It just makes things so much easier uh, and forgivable as far as editing. So I uh, just clicked my background layer and dragged it to the, the little square with the folded corner uh, to duplicate it. Now you can also select layer and duplicate layer. Okay. I have my background copy selected. You can see it's uh, got the white brackets around it. And I'm going to use my cloning tool. If you don't see it in your panels, just right click and select it. The cloning tool allows you to sample different areas of your image and paint over um, the areas that you want to replace it with. So uh, by alt clicking, okay. Uh, you can sample an area. I will sample close, semi-close to the area that I'm trying to cover up. So again, I'm alt clicking. You'll want to sample a few times uh, in different areas so it doesn't look like you copied a, a huge patch and just dragged the whole thing down to another area of your image. Um, so it does take a little time. I'm not going to take too much time with this corner of the image just because um, through the edit we'll be covering it up with uh, a matte enhancement and adding a vignette around the side as well. So uh, this is looking great. I'm going to leave it as is and select layer and flatten. Okay. Uh, next, I want to cover up the sunspots on the left-hand side of my image. To do that, again, we're going to duplicate our background layer. I'm going to click and drag it down to this uh, little box square with the folded corner. Again, layer and duplicate layer will do the same thing. Uh, so what I want to do is take my image and flip it so I can copy what's here on the right-hand side and paste it to the left-hand side of my image. Really super simple. I'm going to select Edit here at the top and go down to Transform, uh, Flip Horizontal. There we go. Now, I'm going to add a, a layer mask. I will be using layer masks quite a bit during... Um, editing both image uh, number one and image number two, I always, always use a layer mask of some sort when editing. Uh, it's really super simple to use if you've not used a layer mask before. I'm, I'm really going to try and go through it slowly and explain it um, fairly well here. So we'll get that down. But again, it's super simple. So we're going to add a layer mask to this, um, this layer, the background copy. You want to make sure it's selected. Again, it's got the brackets on, uh, the white brackets surrounding, so I know that this layer has been selected. It's highlighting. And uh, you can do that one of two ways. I can click on the little rectangle with the circle on it. Okay. Now notice that the white rectangle with the brackets around it is selected. That's my layer mask. I could have also went to layer, 
new adjustment layer, oh, not new, new adjustment layer. Uh, let's see here. Uh, layer mask, and I would have selected hide all. Okay, so uh, keep in mind when using layer masks, black conceals and white reveals. Notice the entire layer mask is white, so the entire layer is being revealed. I want to conceal it right now, so I'm going to invert it by pr pressing Control i So my entire layer is now concealed. I do, however, want to reveal the deep, rich green grass that I had over here on the left-hand side. To do that, I'm going to select my paintbrush. If you don't see it, again, right-click and select Brush Tool. Uh, I want to bring white to the foreground color because white reveals. I'm going to bring my opacity down to uh, about 50%. Now I make my brush larger and smaller by using the left and right bracket tools. I'm going to make it fairly large here and just start to paint over. Now the opacity is not at 100%, so if you feel like it's not dark enough, just keep painting over that area. So I'm really liking that. Uh, and I'm going to press layer and flatten image again. Okay, so we're all done with the background. We're going to move on to baby skin. And I'm just going to zoom in here. Ba Some babies are different than others. This baby did have uh, a few red splotches and scratches that do need removing. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. And I also zoom in super close. Uh, now the fuzzies right here by the hat really don't bother me, but I am pretty meticulous with, uh, you know, I can see a little, um, what is that, a little fuzzy coming down here and into baby's eyelashes. I can see one coming down here over her nose. So I am going to get rid of that as well. Uh, to do that, I'm going to select my spot healing brush. Again, if you don't see it, just right click and select your spot healing brush tool. Uh, again, we want to duplicate the background layer, so I'm going to click and drag down to the box or square with the bolded corner. Kind of looks like a little piece of paper there. Uh, and I am just going to click over the areas that need fixing. Notice I'm clicking once, twice, sometimes three times in the same area just to really get a nice blend. Uh, this brush is like magic. I love it. Uh, and I will use this quite a bit when um, just trying to smooth out baby skin. You want to make that really small and just go over, again, the little, a few little stray fuzzies that I've got going on here. Okay, so this is just going to take me a minute or two, and I am going to go ahead and turn on some music so I don't bore you guys to death. Okay, so I think we're about done with the uh, skin and just removing some of the red tones and red splotches that we had on baby. So let's go ahead and flatten our layer again. So we're going to click layer, flatten. 
this is the last time that we're going to flatten our image. I do that only when I'm duplicating and actually changing the background. So we had changed it by kind of going over her skin and replacing some areas. We also replaced uh, sides on the edges of the image. So now that we're done doing that, I'm going to keep my layers so I can go back and make changes later on. When I'm editing, um, you know, I do decide later on that, oh, maybe I do want to make some changes to a specific layer. It's, it's not all step by step and you're done. It, it is a piece of art and you do go back and make changes later on. So um, definitely expect that to happen and don't feel bad at all if it does. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom back out here. Oh, there we go. Okay, so next I'm gonna work on baby's skin and really lightening and brightening the skin just to bring that attention in towards baby. So to do that, I'm going to click on this little half circle. You can also select layer, new adjustment layer, uh, and we're going to select levels. Uh, and you can name it, I'll just, uh, skin brightening. There we go. Okay, and, okay, with levels, keep in mind the top left dial, if you move it in, it darkens the darks. The top right level, when you move it in, uh, or the top right dial, if you move it in, it brightens the brights. The middle dial here, left, it lightens the midtones, right, and it darkens the midtones. So just keep that in mind. Now your bottom dials, the left one will lighten shadows, and the right will darken highlights. So again, a really good general um, basis just to have in mind when when doing that. Oops. I'm just rearranging my Photoshop here. One second. Okay, there we go. So we're going to start off by brightening baby's skin. Now notice when I'm making changes, it does apply to the entire image. Um, we are going to have this uh, enhancement applied just to baby skin. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the image. We're not really going to pay attention to what this do is doing around baby. Okay, so I'm going to bring the brightness up to about 210 here. And keep in mind when you brighten an image, you want to keep that contrast. So I always move in the top left dial as well. I think I'm going to keep that right at about nine and just bump up the midtones a bit. Okay, notice my settings. Now I'm going to exit out. We want this to be applied just to baby. Okay, so I'm going to click on my layer mask. Notice it's selected and highlighted, and I'm going to press Control I to invert it. Oops, there we go. And to reveal my enhancement, I have white set to the foreground color. My brush is selected. I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 50%. Make my brush smaller, and maybe zoom in a little bit here. Okay. I'm just going to keep brushing this on baby. Now, if uh, this particular enhancement, lightening and brightening baby's skin, just giving it that nice creamy tone, it's, it's pretty easy to see where you're painting, but sometimes it's not quite so easy if you're adding just a subtle enhancement. So if you want to see exactly where you've painted, I want to make sure that you didn't miss any areas of baby skin, just press the, back, uh, the backspace bar on your keyboard. There we go. So everywhere that you have painted obviously is um, showing through here. Everywhere that you haven't is in red. So I'm just going to go through, looks like I got just about all of baby's skin. I'm not painting over the top of her fist here just because it, 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 was, it looks like it was already exposed in a sunspot, so it's pretty bright already. 
Okay, and I'm going to press the black backslash key again just to back out of there. Now, if you want to remove some of the enhancement, just switch back up to black on your foreground color. I got some of that on her little uh, headband ties here, so I'm just going to remove that, and we're good. Okay, so let's move on to adding some more of a healthy glow to her skin. To do that, and again, this layer we're going to apply just to her skin afterwards, so we're not going to pay attention to what it's doing to the rest of the image. I'm going to go down to Hue Saturation. Notice I clicked on my little circle at the bottom. I can also go to Layer and New Adjustment Layer. Okay, so Hue Saturation. And I'm going to take my saturation slider and bring that all the way up to 37%. Notice that it's a bit saturated, but I will be changing the blending mode here in just a moment, so it's gonna look a, a little different from what we're seeing right now. Okay, and I also like to go to the red filter if I'm seeing too much red or not enough. And sometimes that comes across as pink in your image as well, so you wanna see just enough pink tone in baby skin. I'm going to take it down uh, actually to negative 8 and exit out. Now I'm going to change my blending mode. You'll see it's at normal right now. I'm going to switch to lighten. Okay. Now we're going to press control I and invert our mask to black. Grab the brush. Make sure white is your foreground color and opacity is still at 100%. I'm going to make my brush a little bit, uh, there we go, a little bit larger here. You don't have to be too extremely careful when painting this um, particular uh, layer onto baby. And I'll show you the before and after here in just a moment. It's really very subtle. Uh, keep in mind you don't want to go overboard when uh, editing, especially when editing skin tones. So here's the before and here's the after. You can see just a really light, subtle glow and pinkish tone um, in the, the baby skin. So I'm loving the effect that we're getting there. We're going to keep that as is. Next, I do this on most newborns. I just enhance the uh, the lash line. So to do that, I'm going to click on my little uh, circle and go back to levels. I'm going to create a really deep, rich, dark contrast, keeping in mind that it's only going to be applied to baby's lashes. So we're not really going to pay attention to what we're doing to the um, outer part of the image. So, okay, notice my settings. I'm just and it doesn't always have to be exact, just what looks uh, deep, rich, and dark on the image. So left slider is at 33, middle is at 37. I'm going to press Control i to invert my mask, grab my brush, white is my foreground color, the opacity is still at 100%. Now I already know it's going to be pretty dark, so I'm going to start the opacity for my actual level at around 30%. And you'll want your brush to be very small. If it's too big, then it can, the, this particular enhancement can start to look a little fake. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I definitely want to paint uh, around the lashes with a very steady hand. Um, now again, if you make a mistake, just bring black to the foreground color and paint off where you had um, accidentally painted. Oops, I just did there. So I'm going to switch black to the foreground color. Okay, and let's go ahead and just zoom right back out here. So I'm just going to play with the opacity. We're going to keep that right around 40%. Okay, so another enhancement that I do add to newborns at times, not always, uh, sometimes I'll add a little bit of a rosy cheek. Uh, it's actually really simple to do, so I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Also, keep in mind, again, a little bit really goes a long way. So we're going to select solid color. I'm going to select a, a pink, a 
pretty pink tone. I um, press OK. And keep in mind you can go back and change this color later on if you find it's not really meshing with your image. Now I'm going to change the blending mode to, uh, oops, not darken, uh, multiply. And I'm going to select my layer mask now and press Control I. I'm going to bring the opacity of the actual layer down to 10% and grab my brush, switch white to the foreground color, and make my brush larger. Her cheek is already kind of pink on her left side, so I'm going to lower the opacity and just paint a little over there. So notice the before and the after, you can see a little bit of that blush appearing on baby's cheeks. If you don't like the color and you want to change it, just double click on the little color box and you can click around and change the color. It's really a subtle enhancement, so I'm not going to do much with the color here. Okay. And moving on, I'm going to add a little bit of a, a warm glow to the image. To do that, I'm going to add a new layer, click on the circle, and solid color again. And I'm going to add a really light, creamy peach tone. So notice I'm clicking right up here at the top, almost white, but it's kind of like an off-white peachy tone. I'm going to press OK and change the blending mode to multiply. Okay, now I do want to take the opacity down a little bit and we're going to keep that oh, right around 20, 27%. So again, a really subtle enhancement, but it is warming up the image and creating a really a nice warm glow. Uh, now I do want to brighten and warm the image a little bit, so to do that, again, we're going to add a solid color, um, same warm peachy tone, and press OK. I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay this time, and we're going to bring that opacity way down and keep it right around 10%. Okay, so notice how we brightened the image and added a little bit of warmth at the same time. I love adding just a, a touch of warmth to my images and this is a really simple way to do it. I almost always add these two layers, uh, the multiply and the overlay with the light peach onto all of my images um, and it really keeps in having that, that same sort of style uh, with my images so my cl clients can kind of expect what to see. I'm going to add a little bit of color to the rest of the image, but brush it off of baby's skin. So we're going to go to hue saturation. And we're not really going to pay attention what this is doing to baby's skin this time, but rather the, the rest of the image around her. Okay, so I'm going to bring my main slider up to 20%. We're going to go to the reds. Take that down to negative 10. Okay, and actually in this image, I don't mind what the saturation is doing to her skin. Sometimes it does take the, the saturation of the skin a bit overboard, just depending on your edit and the lighting. So I'm going to keep this as is. If you feel like the skin is too saturated at this point, I could easily just take the brush, bring black to the foreground color, bring my opacity down, I would probably bring it down to 30 and just start um, brushing it off of baby skin. But again, we're going to keep this as is. And uh, next I'm going to add a really nice rich kind of uh, terracotta color to the, the image. Uh, this is also fun to do. So I'm going to select gradient map. Notice I clicked on my little circle here at the bottom. I selected gradient map. Um, so I'm trying to slow down a little bit here for you guys. And next I'm going to select my color just by um, clicking in this gradient box here. On the bottom left hand dial, I'm going to double click and let's see, I'm just going to move this up to like an orangey red and get a nice terracotta, I'm going to brick color. There we go. Now I'm going to double click on the bottom right slider. And I want to get a buttery, nice buttery yellow. Okay. 
I'm going, going to press OK and just exit out of there. Now we're going to change the blending mode to overlay. Again, it, it's quite a bit, so I'm just going to take that down to zero and work my way up. We're going to keep that right at 10%. Okay, so this is the before and the after. Notice the nice rich tones that we're bringing into the image. We're really getting a lot of saturation as well. Uh, especially when you're shooting raw, you don't get as much contrast and saturation in, in your image as you do with JPEGs, but you get more flexibility when editing. So I always shoot in, in raw, uh, but I like to bring that color and contrast back into my images. Uh, so we're almost done with this image. Next I'm going to add a nice vignette. I'm going to click on the circle and let's see here. Gradients. Okay, so now I have my little gradient uh, box that's popped up here and I'm going to select linear right beside style and change that to radial. I'm going to go down to reverse and check it. And now I'm going to uh, change my scale and we're going to bring that up to 130. I'm going to bring the angle down to 40. This is just what I found works for me. I know I'm changing a little bit of everything here, but this is the perfect vignette in my opinion. Uh, now we're going to change the color. So I'm going to click on gradient and uh, just click on the box there. Now I'm going to bring the top right dial into 60. Okay, there's my perfect vignette. Uh, all it needs is uh, some color tweaking. We don't want to keep that at white, obviously. So I'm just going to select a nice, deep, rich brown tone on both the bottom left and right dials. I'm going to press OK. OK. Uh, now, sometimes I do keep this at the normal blending mode and maybe bring it down a little bit, but I'm going to switch it to multiply. I am still going to bring down the opacity, and we're going to keep it right at 40%. Okay, so we're almost done. Lastly, I'm going to add the matte enhancement. I usually add this enhancement on outdoor images. I just think it gives it a nice earthy feel. Uh, and I usually add it last when I'm editing because if I had, for example, added the matte enhancement and then the vignette, your vignette no longer has that matte enhancement. So it kind of stands out as being more contrasty than the rest of the image, if that makes sense. So you want to add that matte enhancement on last. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to bring my slider in or my top left slider rather to about 55% and the bottom I'm going to bring up really high here. Now notice I'm overdoing it obviously. I like to do that on my images just so I have more control with the opacity and I don't have to go in and double click and change my settings again and again. Um, so I like to just mess with the opacity instead. Um, now I'm going to take the opacity and let's see we're going to keep it right at 20%. I think that's perfect. Uh, however, I don't keep the, much of the matte enhancement on baby. So we really want baby to pop in the image. I'm going to grab my brush. Notice the layer mask is still selected. Black is the foreground color. I'm going to bring the opacity down to 30%. I don't like to take all of an enhancement off because it does tend to look a little odd. And you don't have to be super careful when painting this off of baby skin. I do want most of the matte to be off of the baby's face. I'm going to take a little bit off of her hat here. If I'm painting several times over her face. I really want to get that um, haziness off of her face. Okay. And there we go. That is our final edit. 
Uh, let's go ahead and group our layers together here, just so you can see the before and after. Um, so this is what we had started out with before. Now, obviously, we had um, cloned out part of our the client and removed the sunspots and fixed some red spots on baby's skin. But afterward, adding the actual enhancements, this is what we had come out with afterwards. We've got those really rich, uh, beautiful, saturated tones going on there and brightened and add, added a nice healthy glow to baby's skin as well. And that is it. We will move a little bit further with uh, the edit of image number two in the next video.